So good afternoon, everybody, and greetings from Bhopal, the city of lakes. At the outset, I'm thankful to the entire organizing committee, Dr. Hajra, Dr. Swamitra Kumar, for inviting me to deliver uh, my views on this very important topic. We know that aorto osseal region, lesions are very tricky. Tricky for the matter that sometimes defining these lesions are very difficult. What angiographically it looks significant might not be significant and vice versa is also true. Secondly, these lesions are very rigid and fibrotic and have a tendency for relaxing recoil. So preparing, preparation of bed for these lesions are equally important. And finally, treatment is also difficult sometimes. There may be geographical miss, placing the stent, the correct of the ostia sometimes difficult. You may put too much or you may miss the ostium. So all these three factors are very important. That is why my approach to aorto osteo lesions is always define the lesion, prepare the lesion and treat the lesion. First of all, define the lesion. I'll share a few of examples. This was a gentleman, a doctor by profession who, who was diagnosed as a case of left main osteo disease and, and was advised CABG. And when we look, uh, when we repeat the angiography of this patient, it was, it was borderline lesion. We are not sure why this patient was advised the CABG. Is it critical or not? So defining this aorto osteo lesion was very important. And the best way to define this by, is by doing imaging and intravascular ultrasound or HDI, which is very useful for evaluating aorto osteo lesions. When we did an IVAS in this, um, in this, this doctor, in this patient who was advised CABG, the MLA at the ostium was around six. Whenever the MLA is between 4.5 to 6, if it's less than 4.5, surely revascularization is a strategy. More than 6, it's conservative. Here's around 4.5, it's 5.5 to 6. So then the second step is to evaluate by doing physiologic testing. When we did the resting physiologic parameters by DFR, it was 0 0.096. Unless the value is more less than 0 0.89, we don't send these for revascularization. We did an FFR also, which was again negative. It was around 0 0.95. So clearly, when we define the aorta osteo lesion in this gentleman who was advised CABG, we could clearly assess that this lesion is not significant and medical treatment is sufficient. So defining this aorta osteo, first step is very important to define this aorta osteo lesion. Second case, another case of a 71-year-old gentleman, diabetic, hypertensive, angina, and effort. He was in medical treatment. And when we did, when we again did an angiograph of this patient, again, aorto osteo lesion was, uh, was, we found an aorto osteo lesion. Again, we did an IVAS. Again, we found this MLA was around 5.8. Again, intermediate zone. Again, we did an email physiology testing also, but this time you can see the resting parameters was less than 0.889, it was 0 0.83. And also, the uh, so since uh, it is showing significant ischemia on the physiological testing, we went ahead and did the angioplasty in stenting to the left main ostia. And this was the pre PCI MLA of 5.86 and a post PCI MLA of 13.12. So defining these lesions are very important. The last case again, again, a borderline lesion, LMC osteo lesion. We have a very separate group of imaging group in which I posted this image and almost you say 11 out of 15 votes said it is significant on based of angiography. But when we did an IVAS, Again, we found that this lesion was not significant. The MLA was 8.74. So almost 50, 11 votes for angiographically, it was looking significant to all the major faculties, but it was not significant when we do the imaging. So imaging is a must to define these aorto osteo lesions. The second is preparation of lesion. As I've said, that these lesions are very fibrotic and they have a tendency to recoil. So prepare, preparing these lesions before putting a stent is very important. And the best way to prepare these lesions is by using a cutting balloon, which causes a uniform expansion with a, with a NC balloon, which expands at the least resistance area. So cutting balloon, the blades, putting at the right area and preparing these lesions are very, very important. Just to give you an example, this was an aorto RCA osteal lesion. And this you can see that very tight fibrotic lesion at the RCA ostia. So what we did it, we prepared it with a cutting balloon, did an IVAS, and once we found that a good cutting balloon has done a very good job, then only we put, uh, we put a stand. So this, all the images are very important before, after cutting balloon and post stenting. So if you've done a good work after cutting balloon, then only we should uh, put a stand. Otherwise, expanding these undilated stands in this austere may be very difficult. 
So cutting balloon is a very good modality to prepare these aorto osteal lesions. And sometimes also uh, these lesions may be calcified. So doing a rotor ablation in, in, in an osteo lesion is very, very challenging. What we need to do is sometimes we take care of a, a extra support rotor wire and we need to disengage the guide slightly until you have, uh, we are not ventralized. And we should start rotablating sometimes with the burn inside the guide to really rotablate that osteo lesions. So finally, when it comes to treating these lesions, now the main um, uh, is the selection of guide catheters. For aorto osteo lesions, less aggressive guide catheters like Jutkins are recommended to avoid deep engagements. And also it helps us in disengaging the guide during stent implantation. So if you're using a backup guide, sometimes it, got, it may damage the osteo further, it may cause ventriculization, and also sometimes pulling and pushing these um, backup guides are not easy. So best guide is to use uh, Jutkin guides in these aorto osteo lesions. Also, if there's a distal lesion, always the distal disease should be treated first. Side hose catheters we no longer use because it gives a false sense of security. So we don't um, longer use. And also for uh, intervention on aorto osteo lesion, a very tight aorto osteo lesion, it's better to preload the wire when we are inserting the guide because sometimes patient may land up in a ventricular tachycardia or hypotension. So it's better to preload the wire when we are um, engaging these guides in a tight aorto osteal lesions. And the, again, a very important or a very um, important step in treating these region is to avoid geographical miss because sometimes putting a stand exactly at the ostia may be difficult. We may miss the ostia sometimes. So best is to take proper angiographic views we have various techniques also, which I'll describe in my coming slides. Floating wire techniques is being used. A partial balloon infection technique has also been used. And sometimes we use an, an adenosine induced temporary block to stabilize uh, the motion artifacts. And also imaging is very, very important to assess whether we have done a good job and we have covered the ostium or not. So in best angiographic use for a aorto osteal stent placement for LMCA is shallow alo canon that means alo 20, 30 to uh, 10 degree and a cranial against 10 to 30 degree and for right coronary artery the best view to assess ostia is to make it very horizontal and that is possible if we increase the alo by 45 to 60 with some caudal angulation so these views should be kept in mind for a proper uh, assessment of the ostia because if we are not making these views we will not be able to define the ostia correctly and we may miss the ostia this is just example, this shallow allocator is the best way, best view to assess the LMC ostia, not the caudal view. One more technique, the partial balloon infection technique. This we are covering the ostium knot. This will stabilize the stent, and also we have some uh, we have some space left to pull the stent also if it is not. Um, we are not covering the uh, ostia. So slight two, three infl millimeter inflation, millimeter, and then I can reassess and we can pull a push stand also if it is not covered. So this partial balloon technique is sometimes useful to uh, proper place the stand at the ostia. Also, there's a sepal wire technique or a floating guide wire technique. That means we are putting one guy, one wire in the uh, coronary or in the uh, aorta ostia, which is hanging free and base, which is which is useful for two uh, for two reasons first of all it it, it is just a, it also acts as a landmark for the ostia and also secondly it uh, prevents the guide from pushing in during the stent implantation so it serves two purpose so floating guide wire technique or the sepal wire technique is also very useful sometimes to uh, assess to define the ostia and place the stent and uh, prevent um, from missing the ostia also, sometimes when there's a motion artifact, the stent is moving uh, very much, we inject adenosine, which cause a temporary asystole for a few seconds. And that few seconds we may utilize for placing at the um, uh, right at the ostia and prevent them uh, and uh, neglifying the motion artifacts. This has also been reported and sometimes very useful. So all these techniques are very useful to place the stent right at the ostia and preventing a geographical miss. Also, once we have done, we implant a stent, an imaging is very necessary to identify for two reasons. First of all, whether we have missed or there's a geographical miss or not, we have covered the ostia or not. And secondly, 
once we play this stand at the ostia there's a chance of doing longitudinal scan deformation in during post dilatation so always a last once we have finished the job get get do do an iverse to see that the that our aortic segment we have not done any uh, longitudinal stand deformation at that segment because this is the one of the precursor for restosis in the future so i'll, I'll elaborate on few of the cases to assess whether we have placed a stand right from the ostia is two views are important above the short axis view just you see start seeing the aorta and if the stand you are seeing the stand starts that means you have covered the ostia you can take you, you can take also the l view and that this is the l view identify the aorta and here you can see two starts are behind the aorta so make use of both the views to assess whether you have uh, put the stand you have covered the ostia or not on on the ivus just to give you an example how important is is this to make sure that you have covered the os not this was a uh, acute in fmi setting this is before btca and this was a, after doing a uh, uh, angioplasty the stent was placed right from the ostia but ivus was not done what happened is after 3 days patient landed up with acute stent thrombosis sub acute stent thrombosis with again rest elevation and complete heart block and when we did the final procedure and assess what what went wrong and we clearly find that that we missed the ostia in that case this was the reason of stent thrombosis so to, to doing after doing a stent at the ostia and i was is very mandatory to confirm that we have pushed uh, we have placed the stent right at the ostia because sometimes angiography may be misnomer we may not be able to identify correctly whether we have uh, placed the stent or covered the ostia or not and i was is a very boon in such cases this is a, a real example of how i was was very useful and that clearly suggests that we missed the ostia which led to uh, a, a sub acute stent thrombosis this time we covered the ostia and make sure we did an ivus that we see clearly this is the aorta we have stent starts are behind the ostia so this is very important an ivus to make sure that you have covered the ostia a second important aspect is to assess whether there is some longitudinal stent deformation in the aortic in the lying in the hanging segment of there this is again this was the final pull back which we are doing after putting a stent and this we identify this multiple stent starts are visible when you see multiple stent starts in the aorta in the ostia segment that means this is a longitudinal stent deformation then you need to rectify it if you don't rectify it this is a nidus for stent thrombosis and nidus for restosis so this is again a very important uh, thing which must we must look into whenever we are doing any aorto ostial uh, interventions the final just to summarize approach in aorto ostial lesion should be to define the ostia correctly prepare the lesion and finally treat the lesion and always do a good imaging to see whether you have done a good job or not thank you